Alright, so here's the forklift I bought. It's not running. We'll get it there. We got the semi driver blocking the road, but uh, it weighs 11,400 pounds and it doesn't run. So, best to get it on the property now. Alright, so here it is off the semi. We had to use the uh, Ford to pull it off, but uh, we've got it here. It's kind of blocking our driveway, so we're going to have to get this thing running pretty quick. Uh, the story behind this, you can see the plugs, the wires, the cap and rotor, they all look new. Uh, and the carb looks pretty clean as well. So what happened was it was running good. Uh, the guy had the carburetor rebuilt because it started running a little poor. He said it was running great afterwards, but he had a friend who told him to change out the cap and rotor and plugs and wires. He changed that and it hasn't ran since. So more than likely, he just did something wrong. And so we're just gonna go through it and try and figure it out. So the first thing I did was hook up this inline spark plug tester. It's a real cool little device. There's a little light bulb in there. And so when you crank it over, if the bulb flashes, it knows that it's firing. And so I plugged it into the number one cylinder here and it was not firing. So then what I did was we pulled off the cap and rotor and when we pulled it off, we saw that somebody had pushed the rotor on in the wrong position. There's a little key to it, so it's, it can only go one way, obviously, and it was jammed up. So we repositioned it right, and then we got it to fire. So we were getting a light, so we know that it's firing, but clearly we've got these spark plugs hooked up. We've got the wires hooked up to the distributor in the wrong place. That's pretty obvious. So what we're going to do next is get this engine at top dead center, and then we'll, we'll hook it up to the uh, number one. We'll hook the, the number one spark plug to the number one location wherever the rotor is pointing in the distributor, and then we'll try and fire it up from there. I took out all the spark plugs. So those are all right here. So I'll regap those. I had to get the engine to top dead center, and I'm not sure if you're able to see. Let me get in here. But you can see the marking. You can make out the five, and then next to it it says DC for dead center with that little point. I couldn't find the marking on the pulley on the front. So what I did was I hooked up the inspection camera to the number one cylinder. Now normally you could just put like a screwdriver in there, and uh, you could just you know spin it around until you felt that uh, until you put your thumb over it, you spin it around until you feel air coming out, so you know you're on the compression cycle, and then you can put a screwdriver in so that you can feel when you're at top dead center. However, this is a flathead Continental motor, and because it's a flathead, if you look in there, let me see if I get a flashlight going for you. If you look in there, you see that's not the piston, that's a valve. So you can only see the valves because the valves are off to the side of the piston. So what I did was I put the inspection camera on and then this portion right here down on the bottom, that's going to be your exhaust valve. But up in the top corner, you can barely see that's going to be the piston. And then I just slowly spun it around until it was right at top dead center on the compression stroke. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to gap the spark plugs, put the spark plugs back in. We're going to pull this cap off, figure out which direction it's pointing, and that'll be our number one cylinder. So I'll show you that when I get it taken apart. See where it's uh, pointing right there? It's pretty close to that wire. So we know that this spins counterclockwise. Uh, and so we put this on, and we see that's this is going to be our number one right here. So it's going counterclockwise. It's 15, 36, 24. It's the same for all inline sixes. So we're going to start there. One, five, three, six, two, four. And then we'll do the ignition coil there. And then we'll see if it starts. All right, we're ready to fire it up. I, uh, it has an electric fuel pump. We primed it. Right now it's running off of this water bottle. Uh, the fuel filter filled up, so it's looking good. So we know that we're getting fuel. Gave it a couple pumps. Uh, everything looks hooked up, so let's see. Oh, there it is. Dang. She's running good. She's running really good. Oh man, that's awesome. So we haven't, uh, I checked the fluids, the radiator's full, the, the, the fluid looks good. I haven't, uh, I checked the hydraulic fluid, but you have to check it again when it's running. Um, so it looks okay, but what I need to do next is I need to, I need to hook this back up. I'm not sure why 
they unhooked it. I think that this used to have a sock on the end, like a strainer. Uh, perhaps that got clogged up at some point. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do, if I'm going to put a sock on it or some kind of a filler. And then i got to hook this back up. Uh, before I do that, actually, I'm, I'm going to send the inspection camera down. Let's see what the inside of that tank looks like and figure out why they unhooked it. So this is inside the, uh, the fuel tank here. And you can see a couple interesting things. You can see there's that metal pickup tube. And then looks like a filter, uh, some type of fuel filter that, that something dropped off. So what they did, whoever had this before, this is the uh, fuel gauge. And so they just took the metal part from the, the fuel gauge and they cut a hole in it and then they ran this uh, line. And I guess they were just counting on the weight of this with maybe a little sock on the bottom to suck up the fuel. There's uh, another proper pickup here, you know, a hard metal line that goes in. And the cool thing about it is that, let me see if I can show this to you here. The, uh, <clears throat> the pickup on the bottom, you see how it doesn't quite touch the bottom? It's got a little pickup, it's about half an inch above. So that's to keep that little bit of sediment at the bottom from getting sucked in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run a line to the uh, fuel pump here and it has a metal strainer on the front to keep the little you know any particles that do get through to keep it from damaging this and then on the line the fuel line here we're gonna run a different inline filter gonna just put a new one on there and then it ends up going to a second strainer so it should be fine to get nice clean fuel in there after we run that line we won't have a fuel gauge until I get a new one to install but should be able to be uh, tested so let's get it going so here's what was in there. It was some kind of like a fuel strainer, a inline fuel filter. So I just used my cool guy long uh, grabbing tool to pull it out of there. So here's the fitting that was on the fuel tank. It's a 1 8 NPT on one side and then on the other side it's a double flare. And then they did a, a flared copper line from it. I didn't like this at all. There's some kinks in it. It just doesn't seem right to me. So this is what I came up with over here just using these are like spare MPT fittings and barb fittings that I had. So I came up with this. It's a 1 8 to 1 8 uh, but then I had to use this adapter and then I had to use this barb fitting and I don't like this either. So I'm going to zip over to the store and see if I can find something that just goes 90 degrees on a 1 8 NPT over to a barb fitting and that way I can eliminate two failure points uh, and if I can't I'd like to at least uh, eliminate this or change out with brass. Alright I just got back from Home Depot I replaced the steel coupling with just a brass one they didn't have uh, a 90 degree that had the uh, female end so I just had to get a female to female uh, eighth inch coupling uh, made it out of there three dollars forty five cents um, I use this it's a Teflon joint compound. I, I've had better luck with that than I have with Teflon tape, especially on these small fittings. Up to a half inch NPT, I'll just use the joint compound. If it's a, above half an inch, then I'll use the joint compound with a small amount of Teflon tape on top. So I'm going to get this sealed up and installed, and uh, then we'll get the uh, fuel line hooked up and then get it uh, running. Alright, I got the... Uh fuel line all hooked up. It's a new fuel line with a new fuel filter. As you can see, it's running nice. She fired up. No problems. So now I'm going to uh, see how it drives and start testing the controls. Alright, so now that I've got it running, I'm starting to test the hydraulics. I didn't actually know how to drive this. It has a clutch. I've never driven a forklift with a clutch before. But uh, driven cars with clutches and motorcycles, so figured it shouldn't be much different. The labeling on the uh, handle here was pretty straightforward, and you can see how it hooks up. It's kind of cool. So this is going to be for the tilt. And these little arms seem to be doing good. And then you move it in and it should lift up. So it lifts up okay. Get the full 12 feet. 
It is leaking a little bit on the mast, you can see. I don't know, maybe you gotta get a little closer. You can see it's got a little bit of a leak out of it. Not too, too bad. You see here where it's dry. And uh, now I'm gonna try to drive it. I, I, I dinked around a little bit with it just to see what, uh, what all these levers do. And so it seems like it's got a two-speed transmission, a high and a low, so I marked that down. And then uh, this one's a four in reverse. It's a hydraulic clutch, so it's really hard uh, when it's not running, and then when it is running, smooth. And it, it goes into gear, okay, but you hear that little grinding, you kinda gotta wait for it to slow down, and you can lock it in and uh, putz around on it. All right, uh, she's running and driving and moving around okay. Everything on it seems good. Uh, so I've got this frame here. It's from an International Metro. It can't weigh too much, but I'm going to try and get it lifted up and see how the mast holds, if we've got any cylinder drift or anything like that. All right, so it's running and driving good. Uh, there is a small hydraulic issue with it, the main cylinder. It was holding pressure fine. I lifted up the frame and it locked up, no issues. And then I was moving a heavier vehicle. I was moving a Mustang on my property and it started drifting down. So it wasn't holding pressure. So I looked at the, the fluid, you know, fluid level was okay, but I, I wanna get a service manual for it. So I, I ordered one up, I tracked one down on eBay. And so I'm going to get the service manual in and then I can really go through the hydraulic system properly and get this thing running in tip top shape. I also ordered up some gauges for it, uh, some gauges and an hour meter. So I'm going to do a part two video where I show just, you know, the other steps that are required to get this thing running top notch. And uh, pretty soon we'll have a perfectly good forklift. I checked the fluid while it was running and it kept getting lower and lower. And then I've turned it off as you can hear. If you see as I open this up, I don't know if it's still going to be doing it there. See how it's releasing all the hydraulic fluid? Which means this system right here is currently under pressure. So there's something wrong with the filter where it's not allowing the fluid to dump back in. So it's pressurizing this side of the system.